Counting aloud is one of those staples in the music teaching world. But when your student can't or won't count aloud, is everything lost for their rhythm skills? Hey, I'm Nicola from Vibrant Music Teaching and Colourful Keys, and I believe that there is always another way to teach our students something if one method does not work for them. First, let's think about why your student can't or won't count aloud. Now, aside from students who are nonverbal or have limited verbal abilities, a lot of students won't want to count aloud because it's difficult, because it feels challenging, and so they push back against it. And sometimes I think we need to push back against that in a gentle way. So sometimes we need to explain to them that it is challenging, that it's a brain workout, that it's something we're working on together and that it feels challenging because it is. I always like to acknowledge the difficulty that's happening rather than trying to gloss over it or insist that no, 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 it's easy. You just have to try a little bit harder and it'll be fine. Well, no, sometimes it's really hard. It's harder for some students than others, but for everyone, we're adding another piece of coordination, another mental taxation, if you will, that some students are gonna be resistant to. So I do think we need to gently nudge our students on this if they won't vocalize rhythms or count aloud while they're playing and just get them to do little bits at a time and give them a reward afterwards even or something that they're looking forward to when they do that. Sometimes we do need those little tiny bribes to get students over an initial hump with something. But usually just a little bit of gentle coaxing from you as a teacher will get you there without any kind of bribe. Now, at the same time as still doing small amounts of counting aloud and working on it together, you wanna to start incorporating other rhythm methods if you don't already have them at your disposal. So my students generally don't resist counting aloud with their pieces anymore. And I believe it's because it comes later for us and it's not quite as challenging. They get what's going on when they're getting to that stage. So with my students, we start with Kadai rhythm syllables or a modified version of Kadai rhythm syllables. You can find my other videos about that here on the channel. You can also use like Takadimi or Gordon syllables or even fruit rhythms a lot of people use. It doesn't really matter, but something that is more focused on the feeling of the notes rather than the mathematical nature of metric counting. So I start with Kadai syllables, modified version to suit me. And from there on, eventually we get to metric counting. I do want my students to know how to do both because they do different jobs. But when you do get to metric counting, they're already familiar with some of these individual rhythm patterns. They have a bit of rhythm vocabulary and therefore it's not as challenging. And from there forwards, I'm doing both of these things side by side. So when a student is playing a syncopated piece and they're just not getting the rhythm and it's not worth insisting that they do all of this with one and two ands, it can be beneficial to just come up with a rhythm lyrics it could be, or in my case, a lot of times it's rhythm syllables that would fit with the combined rhythm between the hands. And that can just get them over the hub with that piece. Now I have a little final question for you to think about, to ponder about as you walk away from this video. And that is whether this is a difficulty issue or a practicing issue. What I mean by that is, if students are very resistant to counting aloud with their pieces and they just say, oh, it's impossible, it may be that they are not practicing their pieces at all consistently over time at home and therefore they're sight reading their music always. So they're really pushed to the max on the difficulty level. And therefore adding another component, speaking as well as playing these two hands and reading the music and coming up with the right notes, it's just too much. And it's happening not because they find metric counting particularly difficult, but because they don't have the facility to be able to play these pieces. The pieces are too hard because either the level has progressed too quickly for this particular student, or they weren't practicing at home and therefore the level increasing, even incrementally, has been too much. So if you suspect that might be the issue, consider some easier music in a supplemental book and see if over that you can get over some of these rhythmic issues or coax them into counting aloud sometimes, not that that should be your primary goal if these are your concerns, but start thinking around the issue and see what else might be going on with your student. 
So what do you do when a student can't or won't can't allow it with their playing? Do you let them off? Do you get them to do it in little bits? Do you insist on them doing it anyway because they just have to get used to it? Let me know in the comments.